right, all right. Testing, testing. You hear me, Derek? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. All right, well, let's get into it. This is another episode of Big J's Let's Talk. So let's talk some sports. And tonight we're going to uh, revisit our conversation about AAU basketball. Uh, earlier this week, we were talking with Jeremiah Howard, and he was giving us some pros and cons about the AAU basketball circuit versus the high school organized ball circuit. And so tonight, I wanted to dig a little deeper into that conversation, and I'm bringing on a guy. Um, we served together in the military for years, a very solid guy, and now outside the military, he's become a coach, and he's uh, got his own AAU team. And so he's going to come and give us some insights on AAU ball that, uh, that we weren't able to get the last time, and just go ahead and fill everything out for us. So... Derek Guy, thank you for coming, and I appreciate you so much for being here, brother. Well, thank you for having me on, Matt. It's been a while. Like I said, we go back for God knows how long. Um, good friend of mine, and you know, glad to see you doing good. Um, let's get right into this uh, little 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 topic about we we got uh, high school ball, AAU ball, and you know. I live, you know, when we were, we started together, we lived in Texas. So mm -hmm. I saw a little bit of it um, in Texas, saw things a little differently um, from the parental standpoint, from having been a player um, for so long. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest things I saw was parents getting hustled. Um, wow. um, because they, you know, coach will see little Johnny at the recreation center and promise him to be, he can make him into the next Zion. And Johnny goes home and tells mommy and, you know, mom, you know, no mom wants to tell, you know, their son, no, when, especially when they, they pull it on, they, you know, they tell dad. And of course, you know, we as dads, you know, we want our sons to go off and do things and, you know, go off and do great things, especially yeah. in the sports realm. Um, but a lot of times these guys, the, your child is a dollar sign. Don't get me wrong. There are good, good, awesome coaches out there. There's good, solid programs out there. But, um, for the most part, I won't say that for the most part, but there, there's a lot, there's a lot of snakes in the grass out there. Yeah. This is what I was alluding to the other night. Um, uh, when we started to have technical difficulties, the scammers out there who are uh, trying to seize an opportunity and capitalize on a young man's dream. Um, my son, he's playing AAU ball right now. And me as a father, I'm looking at it from a student athlete parent standpoint right now. Um, I, I don't know much about the AAU league, uh, but I do want to know for his sake, um, and so that I can help to steer him in the right direction. So what are some things that I need to look for as far as these coaches going? So one of the things, like you hit the nail on the head, they are student athletes. Keyword there first being student. If a coach is like literally, oh, oh, we don't, don't worry about your grade. Don't get me wrong. There are coaches who are going to say that um, who's not worried about your, your child getting in to college then that's the wrong person because they still have to meet NCAA requirements to get into college, to play D1, D2, NAIA. They have, there, there's a uh, called the NCAA or NAIA clearinghouse. They have to meet those requirements. There's certain classes they have to have to, have to take, uh, certain GPA they have to maintain. And then on top of it, you know, they still have to get into the college. They still have to be able to get into the college. They have to get certain SAT scores, and a lot of these coaches are just, oh, hey, let's go play. It's because you failed uh, chemistry, so you're out for three to six weeks. We can still use you over here on AAU. That coach mm -hmm. should be more concerned about that, that young man or young lady getting those grades because at the end of the day, <clears throat> they're not, you know, let's just be for real. Out of all the young men and young men that are going to cross this stage in the next few days that play basketball, less than 1% of them are going to make it to the NBA. 
across wow. nation. Okay. Wow. And it's three uh three to three to five percent that even make it to play at some sort of co collegiate level. Okay, let me get this question real well, not a question, but pretty much a statement. Uh FYF sports debate says AAU basketball as constructed today is making players worse. Even current players like RJ Hampton have admitted it simply because one on one highlight show. Uh AAU basketball is a tool now, not real hoops. Hmm. How you feel about that, Derek? Because I do believe that you do get some benefit out of AAU basketball. Um, as we see with guys like um, well, the route that LaMelo Ball came. Yeah. You know, a lot of that was highlighted through AAU. So So what ends up happening with that is so some a coach will go see a kid who's got talent, okay, who's really, really good. And then he'll let that kid do whatever he wants. Yeah. You know, if, if it's time to work out, he shows up when he wants to to practice. If he doesn't show up to practice, he's still starting. Um, there's no real accountability for those players. So how can you explain? I, I, I've seen that, you know, like I said, I, I, yeah, I started off in Texas. I live in Oklahoma now. I see that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a particular point guard here in the state that he can just do whatever he wants. He if he gets, if a coach tries to tell him something, he just moves over to the next team because everybody wants him. When we first moved here last summer, I literally saw him play with sixteen different teams in a summer. Wow! So, do you think that translates over to like players' attitudes in the NBA now? That, that, not just attitudes in the NBA. That trickles all the way down to middle school, seventh grade ball. I see. I've seen players. Uh, talk crazy to coaches. Coaches can't do anything. Um, one of the things that I, I saw that I liked when I was in Texas uh, is some of the schools actually worked with AAU programs, and kids were filtered into the school. So they are they are already they literally played together year round. Everything that they did. Wow. So, and to be honest, not not saying names, I put anybody out there, but that uh, you'll see why certain programs, whether it's a uh, whether it's basketball or football, those schools win championships because those mm -hmm. kids are have been playing together since they could walk, and so they end up all the way. Pretty much, some of them even end up in college together. They get recruited for everything together. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, my son was alluding to that the other day as well when I asked him the question, what do high schools and AAU do to come together? And that was exactly uh, what he said to me as far as uh, the guys who play on the basketball team for the school uh, have, have an AAU team outside of that, you know, and, and they play all year round and they have that harmony. Like you say, that's, that's a great point, man. That's a great point. Um, so, all right. Now, me as a, a dad, hold up. Let me see. I got another question. It said, college basketball has always been filled with teams collecting the best talent in the country. That is not the problem. AAU basketball is no longer about developing players. It's about image. Well, more I'll say the, the just – yeah, imagery is going to play a major part for the simple uh, for the simple fact that they're trying to capitalize on these players. Uh, we know that coming from coming out of high school, a lot of these guys are being recruited in high school, in middle school, because they see the dollar value in this kid. And when they get to the college level and things like that, millions are made off of these kids, jerseys and uh, and and things like that. So. It's, it's capitalism and it's a business. As far as developing, well, number one, it's more than just the imagery at the AAU level, it's the egos, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've heard coaches, you know, reliving their dreams. Oh, when I was your age, this is what I could do. Why aren't you doing this? You know, this is what I did. Well, the game has evolved. I realized that when I played in the, in the 90s, you know, 
they we you know we came up on the, the New York Knicks Chicago Bulls or you was gonna go at it and you was gonna feel it for two or three days afterwards. Mm-hmm. These kids are more athletic, they're stronger, faster, but they don't bang. They don't so like here, like I said, here in Oklahoma, they don't touch you. if you blow in somebody's direction, they're on the ground. Um, yeah. <laughs> um it, it it kills me because you know the these these players that have so much talent, they could be so much more because they're not being developed. And the, the another thing that's going on is the trainers that come up and they're charging twenty five to fifty dollars an hour and promising making illusions of grandeur, saying that oh, I'm a, you're going to get a D one scholarship if you train with me. Hmm. Wow. And what we got here. See, the unfortunate reality of the mellow ball playing AAU is that his fame came at the price of the other players on that team. Win or lose, the cameras were focused on him. It was not about basketball. Uh, yeah, but Big J had brought up a point that a couple of those guys, uh, besides the Ball Brothers, also went off to uh, good school. I think it said Loyola Marymount was one of the schools and um, um, another um, good university. So it wasn't just uh, the Ball Boys. It, people like to say that LaVarge was just there uh, focusing on his boys. Yeah, in a sense, because that's what a dad is going to do. But at the same time, those other guys didn't just get left behind. They weren't yeah. just uh, pawns. You know, he helped those guys to get to the next level as well and also mentored a lot of those guys outside of basketball. See, that, that's one thing a lot of people don't understand. So at first, you know, I was looking at what LeVar Ball did. and I was like, who is this dude? You know, why is he – and he was just honestly a dad who believed in his, who believed in his sons, and that's what we're number one. When you when when you help hold, hold that little man, that little girl, you make that's one of the promises that you make. If you're gonna believe in everything that they do, and you're gonna back them. So he didn't do anything wrong, in my opinion. You know, hindsight twenty twenty, <laughs> and then starting a uh, starting the team that he did, and, and you know. If you really think about it, he marketed his kids, his, not just his kids, but the whole team, the players, and the way that he did it was actually genius because he got free marketing for his his players, his team, and didn't pay one dime for it. Yeah, hey, he's on ESPN. Okay, what what's the best thing that we as men do? We talk trash on sports. And so then yeah. you add his son into it, his son's into it, he's going to double, triple, triple down any day of the week. Because you, I tell you right now, if my, anyone, I, I have four sons. I tell you right now, I take them over any team LeBron got right now. Because you know what? Those mm-hmm. are my sons. I believe in my sons. And if anybody's going to believe in them, that's going to be me. And, uh, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely, man. And that was one of my my biggest things right there is I'm going to always believe in my sons no matter what. And now you've got NBA players who are buying their own um, their own teams. And so they're they're actually while on one hand they're complaining about AAU basketball on the on the flip side they have their own AAU teams. And so they have their own players coming up through their own AAU teams with, and they have a vested interest in these young guys. So how do you feel about the, it's, it's like, it's, uh, it's the, the scale is off. The balance is off when you have these loaded teams by these NBA players. And then you have these other teams down here who get no shine whatsoever. Um, how do you feel about that, man? I'm laughing about that is because my 16 year old plays for one of those teams. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he, he gets exposure just on that alone. He mm-hmm. goes to uh, showcases that, that I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, not trying to say names, but this is the former NBA player 
uh, who very very famous in NBA, hosts the these uh, showcases and invites college coaches out live streams. And because of his name, and this is his organization. Oh well, uh, if these kids made his team, you know they got to be they got to be legit. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking any, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the uh, the the players uh, from because there's a lot of these mom and pop organization teams that the kids mm-hmm. are, are dogs, and I don't yeah. mean a wawa. I mean straight uh, werewolves that will go go hard <laughs> on you. I got yeah. it. There's a young man here that I wish I had the film to show you had the dunk of the year. And that was the first game. He came down the middle and leaned on all five players on the other. He's six foot tall. Ooh. Yeah. Leaned Ooh. and then rocked with it. Just old school mm. Jordan. And yeah. just like, but get this. He get, that was his only play of the season. He did. He wow. gets. Yeah, he got benched. Mm-hmm. That's the other problem. Like we were talking about earlier, attitudes. His attitude oh. got really bad. Mm. Okay, so, so that, yeah, that that right there is um, one of the things that I can't argue against because I was trying to to uh, give a, find a good argument for it, but what I've seen. Um, yeah, the attitudes have are they they're not they don't have any discipline because there's no real consequence. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you have no real consequence, you're going to say and do whatever. There's no threat or or anything like that. Let's see, uh he says AAU is a circus, no longer about winning. A kid can get a a ball is life highlight and lose by 30. Uh, yeah, I, I said something about this earlier um, because if it's a circus, then the 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 only way the, the people that you would have to uh, hold accountable are all of these many NBA players who have these teams. Because if it's become like this, but a lot of these teams that get the uh, that get the exposure are owned by NBA players then they have a responsibility to clean that stuff up. What mm-hmm. do you think? What would you think about that? Like originally, I feel like a lot of the um, the players uh, they got into it to give back to their respective communities. Um, there's one particular player in, in Texas. Uh, his team started off in the hood, and he paid for everything. Okay, mm-hmm. and it was about giving back. But then now, like like just like that that comment said, a kid um, can get a ball of life highlight and lose by 30, 40 points. Um, play no defense. Um, it was like, well, what 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 where's the fundamentals of that? Where's the pride in that? You know, of coming back and trying to win the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, like I, I, I start talk, tell my players, excuse me, and my son. A lot of times you'll see these guys that are making these highlight moves, and then they're getting their the the highlight is against somebody who's subpar. Yes. Uh, and there's I have I have a rule myself. You got three dribbles. You need to pass the ball off, and you'll see mm-hmm. these guys eight, nine, ten dribbles will. You know what is all this? Somebody's open because obviously you ain't. Um, that, that's my thought process. Um, you need if you we're in a half court set, you got three dribbles because you can't go down the lane dribbling ten times without somebody yeah. taking it. Um, that is a, a huge a huge reason. You know, there's a guy here in Oklahoma that's trying to get on that right now with a bunch of players. Talking about he wants him to sign a contract at 16, 17 years old. Uh, <clears throat> um, mm. Yeah, I, I'm looking at that. Uh, where are you at? I need now. <laughs> that's my feeling uh, in North Carolina. <laughs> um, but um, they, they, he wants him to sign a contract 
and he wants 30 percent of, of their salary if they go pro so wow. you know if you look at the tyson chandler situation you know i guarantee you somebody somebody in a in a purple suit with a derby hat on was making some money uh on the back side of that you know what i mean there's always somebody so parents have to watch that too especially you know parents that don't have the financial means you know parents don't just pimp you know girls on the street they they, they try to pimp kids too right so then it doesn't it doesn't start at the college level or high school level it actually starts in aau yes wow okay back to you d mac i'm sorry Ah, uh, that's all right, my brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That was a, a great, great question. Uh, and Jeremiah said, I went from 5'8 in middle school to 6'4 my freshman year in high school. Yeah, and, and this is my son, Jeremiah. Uh, we started out talking about the AAU with him, and he brought up the whole point of uh, high school having their own actual AAU teams. And that would um, that would alleviate a lot of those issues that they have with the AAU versus the high school. So when you said that, I was glad to hear you say that um, because that that let me know that he's got the right mindset. Uh, but yeah. so right now he's 16. He's playing on a team. Um, he said they did OK in their tournament this year. Uh, he's got a decent relationship with his coaches. What should he really be concentrating on right now? So he's going to going into his junior year. Yeah, well, he's going into uh, sophomore sophomore year. I believe. Okay, so sophomore year, number one, concentrate on the PSAT. Okay, that's that's first and foremost. P A P A C T P S A T, um, and then you know fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. That that yeah, I can't I can't stress that enough. Fundamentals on defense, you know, fundamentals on offense. Uh, I don't know how how high you jump, Jeremiah, um, or things like that. Learn how to you know sacrifice yourself, take take charge is one of the things that I taught my son to do. And he set the record at his school. Um, he said twenty. He took twenty three charges that they counted um, for the season. Set the set the school record. Okay. Um, you got, you know, you got to be disciplined. Coaches, coaches will love to see that discipline on, you know, autonomous. Um, if you want to make that varsity squad next year, I don't know if you made varsity this past year, but um, be first in the gym, last out, shoot your free throws. When it's, you know, time to get your workout on, do your workout. Coach, they got to question you about your grades. Your grades are always on point. Don't be a behavioral problem in school. Okay, so those are those are huge, huge red flags to coaches. Make sure that your counselor knows who you are. Uh, uh oh, oh, there you go. No, make sure yeah, your yeah. counselor knows who you are. Um, so when, um, oh, have you registered for the NCAA clearinghouse on the and in NAIA clearinghouse to make sure you're on track for to be eligible to play sports in um college that's a huge thing a lot of people don't realize that a lot you know i didn't i didn't know that they had did that with my and luckily we found out midway through his junior year and he got him registered so go ahead and as soon as you're as soon as your your young man young lady gets into walks through the door of their freshman year then maybe you need to have them registered the ncaa clearinghouse happy good to see you brother says they want them students to have a perfect life, but them boys ain't perfect. Say something crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We definitely uh, have to raise these kids up in the way that they should go and um, teach them so that when they get in these type of situations that they'll know how to handle themselves. You know, that's that's very important. Right. 